Hello, everyone. My name is Sierra. I am a BQH practitioner, Divine Blueprint Activator, and Empowerment Coach. Hello, everyone. I'm Carrie. I'm the Quantum Gypsy, and I'm a BQH practitioner and just a student of life at the moment and enjoying this journey. Yeah, and together we make Quantum Awakening, and we decided we're going to read The Course of Miracles with you guys. So this is our first time going through The Course of Miracles. So this is our first reaction, just what we're getting out of it on a surface level, and hopefully we're going to have so much fun doing it. And then we're also going to channel Jesus when we have any questions about the text. Yeah, we're going through this and just a little bit that I kind of was reading ahead just for, you know, purposes, purposes of doing this is I've realized there's so many useful things that if you just stop and apply them and integrate them into your old ways of thinking, that it can actually transform you into a new way of being that is so much more freeing without those lower density energies, like, you know, fear, anger, unforgiveness, all those things. Like we're going to go through and we're going to work on the self and we're really excited to do it along with you. Yeah, absolutely. I think I'm at a point in my spiritual journey where I went down a lot of rabbit holes. I gained as much information as I possibly could on my spiritual journey. And now I'm just really ready to focus on that connection between me and God. And I think that that's what the Course in Miracles does. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we were talking about this last week about just even the word God, how when you be discover that you may be a light worker, that you're on this spiritual awakening journey, that somehow there becomes an uncomfortability with myself, especially with the word God in the way, not what it means for me, because I know what it means for me, but how it affects others and how it may trigger others to something that they may not like that association, but for the, to go along with this book and to be more in aligned with our connection, we're going to use the authentic words that are good for us and take it, leave it, use discernment. But if it feels comfortable for you, you're, you know, we're all excited about that. Yeah. So this is the book, the course of miracles. There will be a link down below if you want to go purchase the book so that you can go through it with us. So today we're going to be starting in the preface um, where in bold black letters it says what it says on page 10 or page X. Roman numeral. All yeah, right. Roman numeral X. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to kind of read. I'll read some of these excerpts, and then we're just going to discuss it and just talk about what it feels for us, what we could see it feeling for others, and just how we can apply it in our lives. So here we go. Um, what it says, nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. This is how A Course of Miracle begins. It makes a fundamental distinction between the real and the unreal, between knowledge and perception. Knowledge is truth under one law, the law of love or God. Truth is unalterable, eternal, unambiguous. It can be unrecognized, but it cannot be changed. It applies to everything that God created and only what he created is real. It is beyond learning because it is beyond time and process, and it has no opposite, no beginning, and no end. It merely is. You want me to go on? So in the very first paragraph where it says, herein lies the peace of God, I think when we talk about like the terminology in this book, how it's using these terms like God, atonement, um, kind of Christian terminology, they do refer to God as a he. I think that when we can release our judgment of these words, that's actually where the peace of God lies. And that is actually what allowed me to find the peace of God within myself is when I was able to release judgment of everything that I was projecting onto the world. And especially down New Age spirituality, 
like I'm not judging it. I learned so many incredible lessons and I was able to raise my consciousness in about a year and a half because of that path. So I have so much love for new age spirituality, for the lessons that I learned in it. But at the same time, I didn't find that peace of mind until I was able to like open my arms up to what I consider God to be. And I really just started focusing on that connection alone. Yeah. And I think for me, it's the, I want to be respectful of what the truth is for others. And what I'm learning is truth, perception, two different things, but I just want to be respectful and not trigger anyone based on my beliefs. And I think that's because in my life, other people have imposed their truths on me, even though I physically, I could, I knew within my soul that that wasn't the truth. And so I think that's for me, it's just coming to peace with that, that it's okay. If I agitate people, it's okay if me using my truth triggers somebody else. If I'm doing it from an authentic place with aligned with my soul. Yeah. And I love how they say that knowledge is truth and truth is unalterable. So I really think about like one of the most important truths of this realm is that you cannot have unconditional love with a judgment. And I realized that through my path of new age spirituality, I was putting judgment on so many different things. And it wasn't until I was able to change my perspective to see the lessons that I've been learning and to find that peace and love, the unconditional love in my experiences where I was able to step back and see what of that of that journey was real and what was unreal. So I consider the unreal to be the perceptions that I had created in my own mind that took me away from that unconditional love. Whereas what was real, the real part of that journey was the lessons that I learned, the um, way that I was able to expand my consciousness in such a short amount of time, and the amount of love I can hold in my nervous system because I had those experiences. Yeah, I think if you observe children, that's the most like great way to bring it to perspective. If you see children, they're so in the present, they're so in joy. They're not thinking about these consequences. Like, you know, as it, you, or things we're taught are things like I say to my own kids sometimes, and I'm not realizing that I'm imposing a blockade on them based on my own perception of things I've been taught, you know, but that's like what I think about that moment of when just kids just enjoy and live. They're not in fear. They're just in this purity of everything. And uh, it's all those things outside of that freedom that are not real. They all exist within our mind. And it's all based on things we've been taught or told or seen or just the way we processed in our brains. And I just, you know, this is coming back to that freedom of being that free loving child within and just loving the earth and just being in unison with it. And and I, in, in unison with God. Yeah. I love that example because the very last line of that paragraph was, um, it is opposite, no beginning and no end. It merely is. So it truly is just presence. It's being in that present moment with God. Yeah. It's really beautiful. And I think it's, it gives you a, in applying this information and in, in, in letting it integrate, it allows you to just be present moment to moment and, and be present with those thoughts and be able to be the master of those thoughts and be like, no, I, I don't need to be afraid of that. No. I, and, I, and for me, it's like, I've, I've always been very intuitive of how people behave and understanding the psychology of why they're behaving that way, that I'm even stepping away from doing that. I'm just like, they just are. It's none of my business. <laughs> I don't need to like analyze them. <laughs> and, it, and then I just move on and just enjoy the moment. <laughs> I don't need to fix the world. <laughs> I 
I think that's something that we do as healers, yeah. <laughs> spiritual healers. Like uh, now, if I see somebody acting out, I see their traumas <laughs> instead of seeing, um, instead of seeing like the negative things that they're doing, I see their traumas and I start trying to want to give them tools to use. I start, um, like imagining in my head the things that I could say to them that would help them and in the same way like that's my own delusion that is like the my own perception that I'm putting onto them from my own path and that they might be exactly where they need to be in their life for the experience that they want to have yes who was that one guy that did the interview that you were just blown away with what was his name again um for Joe Rogan, he was talking about the flower of life. Oh, are you talking about Terrence Howard? Yes. He, out of all that phenomenal stuff he said, which I'm sure it was like groundbreaking, right? Like, and, and, and I, it was beautiful. The one thing he said that I walked away from that interview was, is somewhere in his life, he was taught to allow the God in me to speak to the God in you. And I think that was so just like, if we could all talk to each other as if we see that light within each other, we would interact in such a different way. So maybe instead of me, it's about reflecting, maybe instead of seeing the trauma in people is always seeing their light and always coming to them and letting the light in me speak to the light in them. And, and maybe just, it won't matter about those traumas because I will have unlocked and, and, and engaged in a conversation that was more healing than any other psychology 101 that I could have done with them. And I think that's really what it reminds me of. Yeah, that's beautiful. I absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So pretty profound paragraph. Okay, I'm going to move on. The world of perception, on the other hand, is the world of time, of change, of beginnings and endings. It is based on interpretation, not on facts. It is the world of birth and death, founded on the belief in scarcity, loss, separation, and death. It is learned rather than given, selective in its perceptual emphasis, unstable in its functioning, and inaccurate in its interpretations. It's saying everything that's in the mind. Our soul is the encompassing body of God and perfect, but anything within the mind and the way our brain has stored information is not of God. Yeah, I think everything, anything that has to do with our perception. So really just that separation from God and this is why this is why I will always love meditation is because it's just a time to be the observer so that you can see how your thoughts are polarizing you in any way or in any direction. And once you learn to be more in balance with your thoughts, then I feel like that's when the atonement really starts happening and you realize that you're this incredible being behind your thoughts and that you are not your thoughts. And I do feel like these things that they listed off, like the scarcity, loss, separation, death, that's the illusion. It's what's unreal. But the way that we've been conditioned and programmed in this life, that's what feels real to us. It's almost like that's what we have tricked ourselves into thinking is the most real when that's actually not who we are at all. Yeah, we're here to have an abundant experience and what has taken us out of the worthiness or the belief or that we're able to have this wonderful experience and enjoy and, and just have a lovely life. And, you know, that's why they always say start within because the thoughts that you are perceiving the world by are really guiding the journey and the experience that you're having. 
And so it's the best time to, you know, yeah, that doesn't mean the other person may have not wronged you. That may not, may not mean that, that, but that means that you, it still starts within, like you can still love them through that you, and, and not in a codependent way, but just like to forgive them for not what they know. And to know that like it was put on your path for a reason. And I think that it's just, I think being in balance, but I almost want to say you want to be a master of your own thoughts. You want to be a master in the way that you're not controlling them, but that you're present with them and that you're understanding that each moment to moment, each thought to thought is another opportunity for you to align more with the soul. So I guess, yeah, it is in balance. <laughs> <laughs> How I have to come to these answers is just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love that. From knowledge and perception, respectfully, respectively, two distinct thought systems arise, which are opposite in every respect. In the realm of knowledge, no thoughts exist apart from God, because God and his creation share one will. The world of perception, however, is made by the belief in opposites and separate wills in perpetual conflict with each other and with God. What perception sees and hears appears to be real because it per it permits into awareness only what confronts, conforms to the wishes of the perceiver. This leads to a world of illusions, a world which needs constant defense precisely because it is not real. Huh. Yeah, that paragraph is so powerful for what is going on in the world right now, because I feel like everybody is in constant defense all of the time for trying to protect their beliefs of what is not real. Yeah, have you ever like um, been in a, not an argument, but just in a situation where someone didn't tell the truth, but they overly defend that non-truth and on a like extreme opposite somebody who knows the truth and just stays silent because they don't feel like they have to defend the truth it's just that that's what that reminds me of is like you know the truth doesn't have to sit there and over defend itself because it just is it's like take it or you know you take it or leave it for yourself but i i just is but someone who's trying to protect something that's not truth, like goes above and beyond and spends so much energy trying to do it. It's just a very different, you know, it reminds me of fight or flight. Yeah. So why do you think people attach on to these belief systems so strongly? And they why do they let it polarize them so to that extreme? There's got to be safety in it in some way. There's got to be in the whatever is not truth. There's got to be a false safety that they are clinging on to because they don't have a belief in their own divine nature. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I think that they haven't made this connection themselves most likely. And so that is their belief system that is almost like the false god that they've found that is reaffirming their belief system i mean i was in a pattern of very negative spousal relationships for quite some time because that's what i grew up seeing and it was normal to me and it was more uncomfortable to be in a healthy loving freely communicating relationship for quite some time because it was so much more comfortable and I knew how to navigate the chaos. And I think that's just kind of like the same thing with the truth and the non-truth is like, you feel more comfortable, you know how to navigate it. Yes. You understand it's not healthy, but it's what you know. And the unknown, that blank canvas of the opportunity is very scary because what if you fail and now you've lost both things, you've lost something that you were comfortable with, but was scary and, you know, there's all these what ifs in our minds that the mind creates and that fear. Yeah, I completely agree. And when I was reading this, the other thing that came into my mind when he's talking about how um, no thoughts exist apart from God because 
God and his creation share one will, that really reminds me of the all is mind. And it's so cool being able to see the hermetic principles in the Course of Miracles, because I do feel like they're underlying laws that exist in everything and we can find them everywhere. So when I think of the all is mind, the universe is mental, like it truly starts in our mind. We have to start um, reprogramming our mind and our thoughts and just stripping away our conditioning so that we can reset our programming so that we can create our for ourselves the life that we want the life that we desire all of this has been conditioned so deeply into our unconscious mind and I'm so excited to go through this book because I feel like it's truly like stripping away all of that the conditioning that we've been taught so that we can have a healthy mind a lot of us don't even know what a healthy mind would even look like. <laughs> and I think the way to do that is by gaining knowledge and then changing and shifting your perception just one day at a time. And just getting in tune with that beautiful soul that's inside of you that maybe you forgot shined so bright and that it's always been there this whole time and that you were never separate. You were never separate from your soul. And these perceptions may have given you the belief of separateness from your to truly who you are, but it was there the whole time. You just have to get the little rag out, buff it out and like, let it just shine, you know, and, and, and it's free doesn't cost anything. It, it doesn't, you know, we're, we're in these economic times, all these things that the what's going on, but to, to be able to unlock those gifts, it's, it's there and it's always been there and it's love and it can feel uncomfortable even being in connection with your true self. Cause you haven't been fully connected. You've been outside of that, that being, but it's just such a beautiful gift that you can do for yourself. Like start, you know, daily doing little practices to connect with yourself. Yeah. I love that. Or they can even just, uh, um, like watch things like this every day, <laughs> things that help you find love, <laughs> yeah. love and laughter. Those are the things like if you can find love and laughter and things, that is where I suggest putting your attention. Yeah. The world is really funny and, and people may, may not appreciate you thinking it's so funny, but it really is like, and it's silly. It is a farce that, that, that play, you know, of life. And it's, it's just, and then I remember channeling one time and asking the angels, what makes them laugh watching us? And they said, when we cry, because we are so dramatic when we cry, <laughs> Like really, really. And I am like, I have snot going with places. Like I have no perception of what I look like when I'm crying. Um, and it's kind of funny because if I was an angel, I'd laugh at me too. <laughs> hey, Carrie, want to see the funniest thing ever? What's that? <laughs> want to see what my bookmark is for the Course of Miracles? Oh my gosh. <laughs> me and my little brother that's so funny that <laughs> geez you were blonde you were adorable yeah I was I had really light hair when I was little but I tormented my little brother uh -huh. <laughs> and that's what my bookmark is for this book <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone so we've had so much fun today thank you for watching we're gonna be doing this every single week we're really excited about it um, go and check out me and Carrie on Patreon. We have our Patreon. It is Quantum Awakening Portal, where we do group hypnosis, live channelings. We have a beautiful community that is really just there to heal themselves and go through this journey together. We're just grateful. Go check out our community. We have lovely people there, all just kind of aligned, moving forward, just humbly if it's students of life together, supporting one another. And we have some fun channelings. We're excited at the end of August, we're going to do the live group hypnosis. Um, you can also visit both of our websites where you can see out what products we um, offer there as well. So we're so excited to be on this 
little path of life together. Yeah, thank you.